I have officially finished reviewing a lot of products. So I want to give you my little speed reviews on everything that I've tried lately. Hello and welcome. If you're new here, my name is Rachel. And if you're not new here, thank you so much for coming back. I have a whole bunch of products that I'm gonna give you my final thoughts on. I've had plenty of time to test these products, try them in different ways, etc. And of course, I would love to know your thoughts down in the comments. If you've tried these products, what are your little speed reviews on them? Or let me know if you have skipped on these and you wanna try them. Give me all your thoughts in the comments and I will link everything I can down below in the description box, including everything that is on my face. Let's do it. The way that I do my speed reviews videos is I break it down into four major categories just so I can organize my thoughts and so that you get an overview or like a big picture of what I feel about these products. So the first category is yes, yes, yes. These are products that I love. Like I'm reaching for them all the time. They make me so happy inside. There's not really much I would change about them. The next category is good, but not great. So these are things that are good, but not great, obviously. Duh. Maybe there is something about them that's not perfect for me, but could work for someone else. A, a caveat about them or things that I like that are good, but they're not like in my tip top reaching for everyday category. The next category is meh. These are things that I kind of feel middle of the road about. I don't love them. I don't hate them. They're fine, I guess. I definitely won't repurchase them when I use them up, but maybe they would work better for someone else. And then the last category is it's gonna be a no for me, dog. It's definitely a no for me, dog. The voice is just not. These are products that like, I just don't like, I don't recommend. They're not working out for me. And I don't suggest you spend your hard earned money on them. Of course, this is all based on my own opinion, my own preferences. So if I mention something in a lower category that you love, it's not a personal dig to you. I'm happy that you like something that you bought that is the ultimate, right? We want to like what we buy. So let's start off with the yes, yes, yes category, which as of lately, like this whole year, most of my products are ending up in the yes, yes, yes category, which is great. It means I'm buying things and receiving things in PR from my favorite brands and things that I really, really like. So that is great. The number one thing, and by the way, I should have mentioned this. I'm not including eyeshadow palettes in this speed reviews. I just uploaded a palette ranking for my newest palettes, the ones that I've tested recently. So I will link it down below if you missed it, but I am including eyeshadow singles. And the number one thing I think <laughs> that I got this month that I've been loving are the Cleona stained glass shadows. I mean, these are incredible. I did receive these in PR. I could not believe it. I went to Creators and Friends in New Orleans and Cleona was one of the sponsors of one of the events and they gifted us all of these stained glass shadows in PR. And I almost cried, like I had tears in my eyes opening these up. I was so excited to receive them. I've always wanted to try Cleona and their, their shadows are pricey, but they're handmade and they are absolutely beautiful, sparkly, shifty, just really special shadows. All of these are just unique and beautiful. Every time I put one of these on my lid, I'm I'm literally gasping out loud. I am wearing the shade Masonry, which is this one down here. I'm wearing this one on my lid today. I did wear this lime green one in New Orleans because I had a lime green dress and I wanted to match my dress. They're the most beautiful, impactful shimmers I think I've ever tried. They are a little on the messy side, so I just put a glitter primer underneath and then I don't have any issue. And I also always do my eyes first, but every time I wear one of these shadows, my breath is taken away. So they did give me a code, it's just Rachel, and I think it saves you 6%, which is incredibly specific for whatever reason, but they did just launch these nine stained glass shadows to add to their existing ones. And they also launched some highlighters, which are coming up as well. But yeah, these are probably not my number one favorite thing of the month. And I'm not going in any particular order really, but I just, I was excited about them and I wanted to start with them. While we're on the subject, let's go to the fruit lighters. So this was another thing I was so excited to receive. So Cleona is coming out with highlighters for the very first time and everything is fruit themed. So these were also gifted to me in New Orleans. They are releasing highlighters for the first time and they're all fruit themed. So this one is in the shade Sour. It is the green one. Then I have the fruit lighter in the shade Quench, which is a pink one. And then we have Tarte, which is a purple one. 
all of which are so beautiful. And these are colorful highlighters, but they're not really stripey on the skin. They don't have a strong base color, especially if I go in with a fluffier highlighter brush. They don't have chunks of glitter or anything like that. And they are a true powder highlighter. I think they're so beautiful, really stunning. I've been really enjoying these, having fun playing with uh, fun, colorful highlighters. I love clear acry acrylic packaging. Really excited to have these in my collection. Another absolute favorite thing from the month for me personally are these ColourPop So Juicy, what are they called? So Juicy Plumping Lip Balms. Uh, so, so beautiful. So they came out with six shades. This is a brand new formula to their line. And I personally don't like a plumping lip product that is burning, no. I don't want it. These are not burning which is great. They are a minty cooling sensation, but they have a really nice sweet scent. It's kind of, oh, it's like buttercream frosting. It's making me hungry, if I'm gonna be honest with you. Very glossy. I'm wearing one of them on my lips today. Very, very glossy, very glidey. They're very reminiscent of the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lip Plump. Very reminiscent. I would say these have a medium, medium pigment level. You can build them up to be very pigmented or you can shear them out to make them less pigmented, but I would say they're in the medium range of pigmentation. They are very glidey, but I will say you have to be careful. I did leave two of them in my purse and I live in Florida, it's very hot. They melted, like melted in terms of when I went to go put it on, it was just almost liquid. So don't put them in your purse if you're in hot weather, <laughs> keep them indoors. But I love the feeling. I love the effect. I love these. My two personal favorite shades are PSL, which is like a brown, like a warm brown and vacay mode, which is the one I'm wearing on my lips, which is like a nudie pink color. Highly recommend these. If you've been thinking about the Tarte ones, these are I think very similar for a much lower price point. Something else I received when I went to New Orleans was the Salt New York products. Uh, a bunch of the products, we were able to pick out what we wanted and I've always wanted to try Salt New York. I've seen so many influencers over the years try Salt New York. I never got around to it. So when I saw that they were part of the event, I was very excited. Kiki, the owner of Salt New York was there. Kiki is so fun like so, so fun. And we were able to pick out our own products that we wanted. And I picked out three blushes, a bronzer, and also a highlighter, which came in its own compact. I love the packaging of both of these things. I love having this compact that zips. It's so, so nice, luxurious. Also this wood packaging, very luxurious. It opens like this. And the Formula of these is so nice. Now I was pretty skeptical because I have oily skin, although my skin's been more normal to oily lately. These are called balms and I was like, balms, Ooh, I don't know how these are gonna wear on me, but they are the most unique, beautiful formula. I've not tried any cream products like this. So the bronzer is my favorite. This bronzer, I believe, let's see what shade I got. So this is the Sculptin Bronze in Light Medium. Um, the pigment level on all of the cheek products is a light, light pigment, light pigment. So very easy to build up, but I don't find with these products that when I build up, it removes anything underneath. I think it, it's just a beautiful buildable formula that truly builds. I got three blushes as well. I will pop up on the screen what shades, and I'll also put them in the description box, what shades I got. All just stunningly beautiful, again, lighter in terms of pigment, and they give a healthy glow to the skin without being greasy, without slipping and sliding. They just give like a really pretty glow. I feel like any type of skin type could benefit from this. I've been really enjoying these, especially on days where I'm doing maybe a little bit lighter eye makeup. That is something that I really am reaching for. And again, packaging so good. The highlighter is definitely very balmy. It's not very metallic. So if you like more of a wet look to your cheek, I remember back in the day when I was in my early 20s, like in college, late teens, I used to put Vaseline on my cheekbones <laughs> as a highlight. This is giving like elevated Vaseline shine. It's not as greasy or jelly-like as a Vaseline, but it gives that same like, wet, glowy, not metallic, not sparkly effect to the skin. And again, I like that more for when I'm not wearing like too heavy of makeup on my eyes. 
I've really been enjoying these products. I find that they're so unique. I also have a code with Salt New York. My codes are always listed down in the description box, but uh, so excited I got to try these products. And they also gifted me some, uh, some concealers and foundations. I've not yet had a chance to use those. They'll be in a future speed reviews. While we're on the subject of face products, let's let's talk about these face palettes from Blend Bunny and Ellis. So these I think are my favorite part of the collection. I love Blend Bunny's cheek formula, blush formula, whatever. I love their blush palettes that they've had in the past. And these I think are so fun. So this one is the Lunar Eclipse Dimension palette. It is more leaning pink. I love that there are three different depths. It's going to spread across different skin tones and these are pigmented. Okay, they're very pigmented. So again, I think they're gonna work for a variety of skin tones. I really, really enjoy this. My favorite one of the two is in Solar Flare, which is like the warmer orangey based one and the shade Flare, this coral, is my favorite. Like, I have been reaching for this so much. They are quite pigmented, so I have to go in with a light hand, but I love how unique the colors are. They're very blendable, and they are a matte blush, so there's no shine, there's no sparkle, nothing like that, and I really like a matte blush. So these I've been reaching for a lot. Another blush I wanna talk about is the Unearthly Cosmetics Liquid blush. This came, I believe, in the Dreamer collection, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> this is the first time they're doing a liquid blush, and they haven't done it since, and I hope they're gonna do it in the future. This is in the shade Nirvana, and it looks a little intimidating, like a cool toned purple, and it has the doe foot like their satin liquid lipsticks. I was a little skeptical, I'm not gonna lie. I was a little scared of this color, but I love the blendability of this is so, so nice. It blends out on the cheeks so easily. It has a little bit of a moussey formula, which again, kind of scared me. I was thinking maybe it was gonna be almost like a liquid lipstick or it was gonna stick to my cheeks. I don't get any patchiness at all with this. I'm very shocked at how easy it is to blend. And it is quite a sheer formula, but it's not so sheer that you have to build and build and build and build. It is like the perfect amount of sheer for me personally with a light skin tone. I can wear this color and it doesn't look over the top. I'm wearing it on my face today and it just reads so beautiful, like a pinky purple. Uh, I think the formula is unbelievable. Like really, really good, really easy to use. It is a matte finish, so no shine, but it's not patchy, it's not dry, it's really good. I hope Amanda comes out with more shades of this because I'm really impressed with the formula. I love the packaging, it's like almost like a crystal. This is really good and I hope they come out in more shades. I have a couple or actually have a few different highlighters to talk about this month. So I have two singles and a palette. So let's talk about the Lunar Beauty Moonshroom Highlighter Palette. I love this whole collection. Everything in this collection is so good. I'm not reviewing the glosses because that is not a new formula to me. I've used glosses from Lunar Beauty so many times and spoiler alert, they're amazing. And I have used the Full Fantasy face palette that had highlighters in it, but this is just strictly a highlighter palette with four different highlighters, stunningly beautiful. All four of these work for me, although this pink one is a little bit more of like a blush topper for me because it is pink, like it has a pink base color to it, but these are, very reminiscent of like Becca highlighters, very 2017, 2018, very wet looking, very shiny, uh, not overly metallic necessarily, not sparkly, but just a very wet looking blingy highlight. If you're looking for that, this is a really good formula. It's very smooth. It's, it's just like an easy peasy, generally foolproof formula, but I use this more when I want that very blingy look to my cheeks. And uh, yeah, I really enjoy it. I love this whole collection. Along that same vein is the Fenty Beauty Demi Glue Light Diffusing Highlighter. Demi Glue Light Diffusing Highlighter. This is a little bit of a surprise to me. I definitely went in thinking this was going to be a lit from within glow, a barely there shine. Uh, no, no. <laughs> this is very glowy, very shiny, but again, not sparkly, not chunky, very smooth, but very wet looking. And the packaging on this, it's kind of probably hard to see on camera, but it is like a, what's the word I'm looking for? iridescent maybe cover. And then here is the shade. I got the shade Prosecco. I believe this is the second to lightest shade. Yeah, zero two. 
Uh, it works for me, great. Especially as the summer goes on and I have more of a tan, I feel like it's gonna match me even better. This is beautiful. Like it is a true powder highlighter that is so smooth. Very blingy, so smooth. I love it, love it, love it. Every time I put this on, I'm like, wow. I literally say out loud, wow. And for a highlighter to get that reaction out of me is pretty rare. And then the third highlighter I wanna talk about is the Natasha Denona Hygen Skincare Infused Glow Beautifier. This is what I'm wearing on my face today. Packaging is very nice. It's like a, a metal with a magnetic closure. And then on the inside, I got the shade 01 Light. So this is the lightest shade. I do feel like as it comes into the summer, this may be a little too stark white for me, but right now it's working great. And this formula is very different than the other two that I talked about. This is a putty formula, like it's very squishy. You can apply it with a brush, you can apply it with your fingers. And she, she actually said that this is not just a face highlight, you can use it in conjunction with your face primer. If you want to have a glowy base, you can mix it with your foundation, da 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 da. Basically, it's a squishy, cream to powder highlighter that you can use. I mean, you can use any highlighter in any of those ways. You know what I'm saying? Um, this is really pretty. Like, I really enjoy this. I actually prefer to use it with a brush versus my fingers. It gives a little bit more of a lit from within glow that way. So when I'm looking for that type of glow, I actually have been reaching for this and it just feels very luxurious, both formula wise and packaging wise. Something else that I got while I was on the New Orleans trip was a pair of bright lashes. Angela Bright, the YouTuber, she was actually part of the trip and she has her own lash brand and I'm wearing the style flutter on my eyes and I actually ended up buying another pair because I love them. I actually bought a whole bunch of other lashes from her site because I loved these lashes so much. These lashes are so beautiful. They look beautiful. They feel very high quality. I have worn this pair upwards of 10 times and they feel like they could last forever. Uh, they're so, so good. They hold their shape really well. They give a more like fluttery effect, volumizing without being too long. They're not so thick that they feel heavy on my eyes. And these are considered half lashes, but for my eyes, they are more of like a three quarter lash, which I really love. They're just really good lashes. I can't recommend them enough. The style flutter are the ones that I've been reaching for, but I did buy a few other styles that I am going to play around with. I haven't yet, but the style flutter in particular, I've been wearing a lot. Like if you look in the description box of a lot of my videos, I'm wearing these lashes. <laughs> and then the last thing I wanna talk about in this category is kind of a random thing, but I had to share it with you because I have been really loving it. Another thing that I got from my trip, a lot of the things that I'm talking about today, uh, I got from New Orleans because I got them about a month ago. So I've had a month to test all these products. So now they're coming up for review. Uh, but this is from the brand Self Made. Never had heard of them before. And they did gift a, a bunch of other products that I've not gotten to test yet. But this is the True Grit Resilience Scrub for Scalp and Body. So it's a body scrub. I love this scrub. I have exclusively been buying the uh, tree hut scrubs that come in the tubs for years at this point. This is my new scrub that I'm gonna start repurchasing. I like this one so much more for a few reasons. The first reason is the packaging is very aesthetic. Okay, that's a little side reason. Uh, I also love the packaging in terms of it's a squeezy tube. I don't love the tub situation. I don't love tub situations for most things. I always prefer a squeezy tube. I find that it's a little bit easier to use and a little less messy to use. Uh, so I like the packaging. And then this scrub is very unique. It comes out with basically like a gel form with the scrubbing particles in it. And then when you work it onto your skin, it almost creates like a lotion slash lotion-y lather type situation. So you can really feel that it is moisturizing your skin as it's scrubbing, where most scrubs, I feel like they're just so rough and it's like you're rubbing salt and sugar on your leg. This actually kind of lathers up. It is the most wonderful experience and it has, it has a lemony scent. So it's very fresh without being overwhelming. Like not very sweet smelling or anything like that. Yeah, it says exfoliate, nourish and restore. I use this on my body before I shave. I've really been enjoying it. I'm absolutely gonna continue to repurchase this. All right, so that's everything for the yes, yes, yes category. Let's get to the good, 
but not great category. So first thing I want to talk about is the Urban Decay Face Bond Foundation. So I have now had plenty of chances to test this out. I know it's taken me a little while. I'm probably the last person to review it, but I have to be honest with you. When I first tried this in a video, I did not like how it looked on my skin. I just prepped, I believe I just prepped with my normal moisturizer and I definitely felt that at the end of the day, I did not like how this looked on my skin. It looked very dry. It looked very cakey. It looked very heavy. And I talked about this recently in a video where I went to work and I'm a dance teacher. So I'm always like using my face and making different facial expressions. And I found that this sunk into my lines pretty badly. Now, of course I have lines and if I'm wearing foundation, it's gonna sink in regardless, but I find certain foundations sink in more than others. And this one was probably my top category of accentuating all the lines in my face, which I'm not a fan of, okay? So I thought maybe, okay, I probably need to prep my skin with a moisturizing primer or something like that. And so I did another video where I used the Milk Hydro Grip. And I do feel that that helped a lot, but I remembered why I stopped using the Milk Hydro Grip. It's because it breaks me out. So for me, I can't I can't use that primer anymore. It, it breaks me out really bad. But my point is, I have to really very much prep my skin with a moisturizing base underneath. But with that being said, I do still feel it's a little makeup-y looking, a little more makeup-y looking than I like to wear on a regular basis. This is something that I will reach for more when I am doing a more glam look if I want more coverage, because this is high medium coverage. Even when I use a very light layer, which again, I tried to do so that it didn't give me that makeup-y look, it's still pretty high medium coverage. You could build this up to look full coverage, I'm sure. But again, it might look a little heavy. I think for the first like couple hours, like I put this on maybe an hour ago, it looks really nice, although it is starting to sink into the lines, but it looks really pretty on the skin. Just throughout the day, I do feel like it looks a little dry on me. It does hold up well though. It doesn't come off my face like some foundations do. I am normal to oily, so keep that in mind. Another kind of downside to this is that it, the shades run very light. I wear the shade 13 Light Medium Cool Olive. I like that there's an olive option because I definitely have an olive undertone, but light medium is even slightly too light for me. And I'm hardly ever a light medium. When I am a light medium, it's in the summertime when I have quite a tan. So keep that in mind. But I've been enjoying mixing this with foundations that are a little bit more hydrating and I want a little more coverage with it. I've been using this as a mix-in, so I like this foundation. It's good. It's not my favorite by any means. It's not awful. It's good, but not great. Another brand that I got to experience through Creators and Friends is Surat Beauty. They are a luxury brand, and I'm happy that I was able to try out their products because I tell you right now, based on their price point, I never would have tried out their products because they're very pricey. So one of their products is showing up in the good but not great category. It is their liquid eyeliner. Specifically, it's called... I don't know. They're liquid eyeliner. It's just a black liquid eyeliner. Um, I do like that it is a brush tip. Brush tips are always my preference. I'm always gonna prefer them over a felt tip. They're just easier to glide on my eyelids personally. They, this is good, like it's a good eyeliner. There's nothing revolutionary about it. It does what it's supposed to do. I feel like a lot of liquid eyeliners suck, if I'm gonna be honest with you, but there are a couple that I like more than this at a lower price point. So that's why I'm not putting it at the top category. I have no issues with this. I think it performed well. Uh, I used it today just to draw a line on my upper lash line, but I have used this to create a wing and I have no problems with it. It's not hard to use again. I think it's because it's a brush tip. It's black, it dries down matte. It's nice, I like it, but it's not like blowing me away. The next thing I wanna talk about is the Blend Bunny and Ellis Celestial Cheek Glaze. So this is their highlighter that they came out with and this is a very pink highlighter. Now I will say, uh, this is a good highlighter. I think it's really pretty. This for me is more of a blush topper. I did wear this a couple of times more on the upper part of my cheekbone and you could definitely see a very strong stripe on my face, if you will. I had to learn how to use it for my skin tone, how to make it work for my skin tone and what I like and my preferences. It's not the best highlighter I ever used. I think it's really pretty. It is just a 
very smooth with very, very, very small sparkle particles in there. This would be really pretty on the eyes as well. It has like a little bit of a gold sparkle reflect in there. I think it's really pretty. Uh, but again, for me, it's a little deep to be a true highlighter. It is more of like a slightly putty formula as well. So yeah, I like it. I think it's good. Uh, the next thing in this category I wanna talk about is the Too Faced Melting Bronzing and Sculpting Stick. I have mine in the shade Chocolate Mousse, which is the lightest shade. Uh, I like the packaging. I think it's really pretty. Um, it, it does have a chocolate scent, but I really gotta put my nose in there to smell it. Like I don't smell it when I'm applying it. But with that being said, I also don't have the best sense of smell. So you'll have to let me know if you have a different experience. This is, like I said, the lightest shade. It is for me a little bit more cool toned than I prefer to go. It is a little more of a contour product for me personally, but I will say it is very easy to blend. It's very easy to apply. I don't go on to my face, straight onto my face and blend it. I put it on a brush and then go from the brush onto my face personally. Uh, this is very pigmented. I'm gonna go ahead and say, if you are lighter than me, this is probably gonna be too pigmented for you. So keep that in mind. And this is the lightest shade, uh, but just the color is not my favorite. The application is great. The finish is nice. It's just like a natural finish, but it's, again, it's not blowing my socks off. And then the last thing in this category that I wanna talk about is the Natasha Denona Hypernatural Face Palette. So when I first did my video on this, like my first impressions, I was pretty disappointed in this and I got a lot of angry comments, okay? I got a lot of angry comments saying, you're using it wrong, etc. And you know what? I thought about it and I was like, okay, I get what you're saying. Let me go into this experience a little bit differently than I would to do my normal makeup routine. Because normally with my makeup, I use two to three mattes in the crease, sometimes four mattes total. So this is not meant to be used like that necessarily, like on its own. I did use the bronzers and the blush as matte shadows and I wasn't crazy about it, but again, they're bronzers and blushes. And I will say the bronzer and blushes are beautiful as cheek products beautiful and once i found a brush that was small enough to fit into the two like the light and the medium shade in the bronzer i've been enjoying the bronzer a lot like it's very silky smooth to blend it's a natural finish soft focus finish and the pink blushes are very pretty mid-level pigment very blendable, just gorgeous cheek products. I always love Natasha Denona cheek products anyway. And then these shadows are okay. They're not my favorite, but they're nice. Uh, when I ended up using this palette several times, I did pretty much always look at my look afterwards and be like, wow, actually, I really like my look today. You know, like admittedly, going into it with a negative attitude and coming out of it being like, wow, I actually like how this came out. So again, is this like my top favorite thing? No. I can absolutely see who this is for, for someone who likes a one and done shadow situation. But actually every time I've used this, I have pretty much really enjoyed my look. It's good. All right, now we're in the meh category. So I have two products from the brand Surat. So the first one is the brow gel and it is in the shade clear. Uh, all of Surat's packaging is very pretty. Again, it's a luxury brand. So this is a clear brow gel that actually shows up white and then dries down clear. And it is like one of these hairbrush type of applicators, which I think is kind of fun. Uh, I do have quite full brows. So this type of applicator works great for me. I do feel like I'm basically combing my eyebrow hairs, which is nice. For me, this is just okay. Like it's fine because it is more of a flexible light hold. And the owner of Surat did talk to us about the products and that is what she said. She said, this is for a very like light hold, flexible hold, and it's just not in my preference. I don't want a flexible hold brow gel. I, I don't. Like I want something that's gonna glue my brows down. So all that to say, this does what it's advertised to do. There's nothing wrong with it that I would put it in the no category. It's just not in my preference. And then same thing with the liquid blush. This is the Artistique liquid blush in the shade Barbie a Papa. It is like a very light pink. This is very lightly pigmented, very lightly pigmented. If you are any deeper than me, I don't know that this shade is gonna work for you. I'll be honest with you. It's very sheer and it's very glowy. So uh, 
not in my preference. Both of those things are not in my preference. But again, I think there is an audience for this. If you want a very light wash of color on your cheeks, you want a very glowy look to the cheeks. I think it's fine. I don't think it's a bad product, but uh, yeah, it's, it's just not for me. Another thing that I hate to put in this category because this is one of my favorite brands, but again, it's just, it's more just not for me. And this is the Blend Bunny Omni Lash Lash Perfecting Mascara. So I've had this for quite a while now and I've finally been able to fully get my thoughts on it because I feel like with mascaras, I've got to use them a long time because as they age, I find that they get better with age, just like me. But I will say, I don't feel like this really changed much with age. I feel pretty much the same as I felt when I first started it. So the first thing is the brush is quite large, a little larger than I personally like, but most of all, the formula, it's a little thick for me. Now I have very sparse, very sad lashes. They grow straight down. It's pretty hard for me to find a mascara that I love. And this is not awful. And I definitely think this will work for some people that have fuller lashes than I do. I just feel like too much product comes out on the wand and it's quite a wet formula. I prefer something a little drier. I prefer something that doesn't have as much product on the wand because I can easily just put this on my lashes and it automatically just transfers to my lash line just because I don't have enough lashes for the product to stick to, if that makes sense. So I'm not mad about this. It's not the most awful thing. I'm personally not gonna repurchase this uh, because just of my lashes, but I have been wearing this on days where I'm gonna wear a false lash, like I'm wearing it today and it's fine. Like it works out fine. It doesn't run, it doesn't smudge. I don't personally usually have problems with that, but yeah, let me know in the comments if you bought this and it's working for you. I would love to know. The next thing I wanna talk about is this Milk Makeup cloud glow primer so again this is kind of like a product where i'm like i mean it's fine like i don't really feel one way or the other about it uh this is a very small component very when i first opened this up i was wondering if i got maybe just a sample size no this is the full size this is the full size so be aware of that and i've used this obviously quite enough that I am getting my final thoughts on it, but I haven't used this every day and I am pretty much halfway done with this. So the price point for how much I've used it, it's a little pricey in my opinion. So this comes out as a foam and then you rub it on your face and it becomes, it's supposed to become like a glowy type of primer. I think it's fine. Like it's moisturizing. It sinks into the skin nicely. Um, it does what it's supposed to do. I don't think if you're looking for a very moisturizing, very glow base that this is the best product. A me with normal to oily skin, it worked good on me without being overly moisturizing. So again, if you're dry, I don't know that this will give you what you need if you're looking for a very moisturizing product. And I think it's a little gimmicky personally. I don't know, I just kind of feel middle of the road about it. It works out, it's fine. I'm not gonna repurchase it, but I'm not mad about it. And then the last thing I wanna talk about in this category is the NYX Buttermelt Bronzer. I did get mine in the shade Deserve Butter. So I don't like the packaging. It's one of these ones like, I don't have nails on right now, but if you have fake nails trying to get into this, good luck to you. I really love the pan embossing, but I will say this is the second, I believe this is, oh, it's the third shade. It's marketed as a light medium neutral. Mm, I don't know about that. <laughs> I would definitely call this a medium. Like this is very pigmented and it is very pink in undertone, very pink in undertone. And I should have expected that based on the swatches, but I wanted to try it anyway, but I am here to confirm it's a very pink undertone, which is just not my personal favorite undertone. Again, I'm not mad about this. I'm not going to declutter it necessarily right now. I have been reaching for it, but it is quite pigmented. It's a little too deep for me right now. I just gotta be very light-handed. I actually did end up setting my Too Faced bronzer stick with this today. Uh, it's, just, it's just very pink. And that's why it's coming in here, but yeah. If you like pink undertone, and I remember mentioning this in my new makeup releases, and a lot of people were excited that there was a pink undertone bronzer coming out on the market because you don't see it that often. So it could be for you, it's just not my favorite. Rachel from another time period popping in. I can't believe I just glazed over this in the video, but I had no products 
in the it's gonna be a no for me dog category. How exciting is that? This has happened for the past couple of speed reviews videos. Two thumbs up for me. That is a major win. Okay, I'm gonna wrap up the video now. All right, and that is it for the speed reviews. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave me a comment down below letting me know your thoughts on any of these products that I talked about today. And remember, everything will be linked down below in the description box. Let me know, did you try these? Did you skip out on them? Let me know because I love hearing from you. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps me out a lot when you do that. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you would consider subscribing before you leave. I do upload videos weekly and I'd love to see you back on my channel again. I wanna thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.